name is Rich Siegel. I'm director of branding for Fender Academy at Fender Musical Instruments. Fender moved to Scottsdale, Arizona in 1991 and uh, we brought the spirit of rock and roll with us. Um, we've provided a lot of, a great place to work for a lot of people who have passion for music, uh, especially guitar. Bill Schultz was our CEO at the time and uh, he wanted to make the move to Arizona for business reasons. So I got a call from CBS, John McLaren, to come and work for Fender and was developing a complete line of entry-level guitars when CBS decided to sell. So I used my contract, mortgaged my house, cashed in life insurance, put enough money together, and then went out and found some private investors that we could buy uh, Fender. That's the history. <laughs> I didn't know what I was doing. Perhaps if I did, I wouldn't have done it. <laughs> what Fender is today is because of Bill Schultz. When I worked for him, he didn't think he knew your name. And he, you know, the first time he did it, he's like, hey, Daryl, come here. Do you want to go to lunch? And I was just like, Bill Schultz? He knows me? Oh, wow, that's really cool. Yeah, I'll go to lunch with Bill Schultz. And it was funny because he was just that kind of guy. I think he knew everybody. He was one of those people who knew everybody that worked for him. The Fender Factories are still in Corona, California, but uh, our corporate offices are here. We also have, but we have offices all over the world. We have offices in LA, in Nashville, in the UK, in Australia, Japan, and uh, we're a worldwide corporation and we're glad that we're in Arizona too. My name is Billy Siegel. I'm the operations manager for marketing and artist relations at Fender Musical Instruments Corp. This is the third office we've had in Arizona and each time it's gotten bigger and bigger out of a necessity. So part of moving into this office, having the space, we wanted to make sure that no matter who's coming in to visit us, um, that we have a space that's fun to look at, that's jaw-dropping. Uh, we have these walls here. This is the giant Telecaster wall that is basically, uh, it's based on a 1952 Fender Telecaster guitar, but the backdrop behind the Telecaster is song titles. So if you kind of, you know, look up the wall here, you'll see there's song titles from the, the 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, current. Um, it's a variety of songs. Rich Siegel was the brains behind this. I think Rich, he, uh, he's a man with many ideas and he'll just lay something on you and you're just like, wow. So this is one of those wow moments. We also have the Stratocaster wall, same thing. It's a uh, candy apple red Strat, same thing with song titles behind it. Again, um, Rich Siegel's brainchild. I mean, over the years that we've been here since 1991, we've had everybody from Panic at the Disco, Dirk Spentley, um, John Oates, uh, Green Day, uh, Fall Out Boy, and many other artists come through to visit and to actually play for employees. We do employee concerts uh, here at lunchtime, and it's employee only. It's a lunchtime thing we call PB and Jam, and bands come in and entertain employees. We eat peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. It's, it's a fun time. So this is the infamous Fender PB&J stage. There's the, uh, the Wall of Fame where artists that have come in to play or come in to visit. Some of the highlights here would be like Billy Gibbons from ZZ Top, the entire Panic at the Disco band, Dwayne Eddy, Tony from Pierce the Veil, uh, Buddy Guy stopped by, uh, Taking Back Sunday. This is Travi uh, from Gym Class Heroes. Jimmy Eat World in here. We have a signature model with Jim Adkins. We had the guys from Fall Out Boy stop in, Arizona Diamondbacks. Nils Lofgren, Alice Cooper, uh, Billy Duffy from The Cult, uh, David Ellison from Megadeth, Arizona legend George Benson. This was the prototype Kurt Cobain Jagstang signature model guitar that we did with Kurt back in the day. And we even have a copy of the original drawing uh, with Kurt's notes on it um, with the guitar. So this is one of two um, custom Fender Paramount acoustics that we did for Lady Gaga in conjunction with her album Joanne. Um, we did two of these. One, uh, she decided to give one away to the director of an award show at some point that she played, so we had to build her another one pretty quickly. So this is the second one. So this sparkly, fun guitar is one of Avril Lavigne, uh, Avril Lavigne's signature model guitars that we custom painted. We used it for a, um, we used it in the music video for the single Hey Girlfriend, and then we used it in two Canon camera commercials. So this is the actual guitar used in all of those things. Um, it's even got Avril Signature on the back. Fender's been uh, very active in the Phoenix and Scottsdale community. We worked with big brothers and big sisters of Arizona. Worked with Alice Cooper at the, his Solid Rock Foundation. 
Hey, I'm Alex. I'm Phoebe. I'm Haley. I'm Chloe. I'm Liz. And thank you to Fender Guitars for supporting us all at the Alice Cooper Solid Rock Foundation. Fender Rocks! My name is Michelle with the School of Rock Scottsdale. We really appreciate everything that Fender's done for us here. One of the things Fender has done with us at School of Rock was a focus group with our kids. They wanted to learn a little bit more about their amplifier and the aesthetic of it, so they brought in a test amp for the kids to uh, play with and took their feedback and then brought a final product back and it was a lot of fun for the kids, a really great experience. Thank you Fender for Fender Rocks! I got here in 84, so I've been here a while. And uh, I heard a rumor that Fender was moving their corporate headquarters to Scottsdale in 1991, which turned out to be true. And um, not long after that, I started hearing about all my friends that I had known from different bands starting to go to work for Fender. Like back, back then, there was Richard McDonald from uh, Walt Richardson and Chris Gill from the Groove Merchants. And I heard about these people going to work there. Well, I started in 2004, and I, I would say for about the first three months in a building with about 200 people in it, almost every day I walked by somebody and go, wow, you work here? And they'd look at me and go, wow, you work here? It was awesome, man. It was like coming home to family, you know? Billy Siegel sold us all our, sold the Jim Blossoms, all our guitars when he worked at the guitar shop and he helped me build my recording studio and he was the first recording engineer we had at my studio. I've always enjoyed my relationship with Fender since they moved to Arizona. I've always played Fender guitars and I'm really happy that Fender is a big part of the Arizona music scene. Congratulations. Uh, when Bill Schultz moved the, the corporation to Scottsdale, it really impacted Scottsdale. It, it brought, of course, jobs, but I think he brought a lot of talent in from this area that it impacted, like I said, it, it, it made us feel like we were part of Fender, we were part of the legend. Well, I don't know if I'm a guru or not, but you know, Fender has a great name, a great founder. Uh, all we had to do was, you know, follow his, uh, uh, his philosophy. And you know, we work under the premise that uh, uh, you've got to look ahead and make changes, but you can never forget your past. And our past was Leo Fender. We're honored to be uh, inducted into the Arizona Music and Entertainment Hall of Fame, and we thank you very much for this award.